and we are live. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. And Hi. for today's Martian Hour, we will. This is actually part two of my. Uh, how did I say this? Uh, birthday special live stream event <laughs> because today is my birthday and i've decided to spend it with you guys you know do a stream i already did yeah okay i already did part one this morning on twitch and we answered 24 plus one questions uh writerly questions the reason why we did one because um i searched for i tried searching for 24 questions to ask authors or writers but there's nothing like that. I only got 50 questions. And so um, what, I've, what I decided to do is 24 plus 1 with the one question being bonus. Hold on a second. Gabriel, get down. No. No! Yeah, it's probably way past his bedtime. No! Because uh, the light's open. That's why. Okay, so I hope you guys are doing well. And we are going to try... And fit in 24 plus 1 questions during this stream. I also wanted to play music um, during the stream. However, seeing that Twitch muted my um, my Martian hour last Monday because of playing music, I didn't want that to happen here on YouTube because I believe that YouTube has stricter rules in regards to copyright. <laughs> so um, we're not going to do that. Also... Oh, my apology if I, if I don't look my best. It's already nighttime. And um, I actually have eyeliner on, and my eyes are already in pain because I've been wearing them the whole day. And I couldn't wash my face because if I wash my face, it's going to rinse off the eyeliner. And the reason why I wanted to wash my face is because it's an oil factory again. That's how oily my face is. Gabriel just won't listen. Gabriel just won't 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 listen and Kiara is here hi thank you thank you um like i said this this morning at twitch um i actually forgot it's my birthday today the only thing that the only thing that reminded me that was my birthday is seeing that people greeted me today so yeah uh, so thank you thank you so much for your greetings um so for tonight tonight or today depending on where you are stream um we will be answering these questions together um yeah so whether you're on watching this on the replay or watching this live you can answer it in the comments or in the live chat i will try as much as possible to be very very slow when i speak because uh i experienced an anxiety attack today and um yeah and something came up so many there's so many emotions today i was sad and i was like indifferent <laughs> you could call it indifferent and then i was happy those were my emotions today um i was sad because um unfortunately i lost one of my cats today um i don't know if, if it happened yesterday or just today but today was raining it was, there was it was a stormy day today and here in my area when it rains hard um, we have a bit of a flood. It's not that high. I mean, it's just like above my above my feet. That's it. And uh, while I was looking outside, um, I'm sorry YouTube for saying this, and I'm sorry for people who's watching this on the replay, watching this live. But I have to say it. Um, I saw um, my dead cat's body just floating down the street, and <clears throat> I didn't have enough time to process what I saw. I just went down, uh, grabbed, you know. Grab, the, grab my cap, put it, put it in a much more comfortable um, place, uh, and <laughs> uh, yeah, no, my, my no. cat, my cat just ran in, um, and you know, I, I, no. I was sad, no. but hold on one second.
sorry about that parenting uh so yeah um i didn't have much time to process it i was sad and until now um it's it's still painful to remember um i just hope that he's in a much better place now i have one last cat remaining and that's milky um her other brother uh, momo i had to give away as well as the mother because uh, my neighbor was complaining about those two and i had to give them away so i'm left with one cat now um yeah um uh next is i don't know if indifferent was the right word but um i was like when i when i re remember that it was my birthday i was like okay it's my birthday i am thankful for another year i'm thankful for all the blessings that happened in one year um but i don't know i just felt like hmm, it's just another day <laughs> um and then uh a while ago before dinner happened uh i received uh, one of the best gifts that i could have received uh today aside from you know receiving a call from my family i couldn't go home because there's a storm here but they called me you know, to make sure that um, i am okay during my birthday and you know everything and i'm happy that they celebrated my birthday over um at my parents house because i don't want them to not celebrate it just because i'm not there you know? um i hope you'll do something to celebrate well the, the very the very thing that i did to celebrate was to do live streams <laughs> do live stream do a live stream on twitch and now on youtube and um i took care of um the ebook file for the impact of her part one and i will be handwriting after this actually yeah so basically it's being productive <laughs> being productive today that's that's what i did to celebrate um yes uh it's um it's a it's very painful it really is um, but i hope he's in a much better place now so i'm left with one cat who's milky she's she's a cat yes but she acts like a rabbit a rabbit rather than a cat so yeah yeah, for me, I don't know. Um, I maybe, I thought to myself, maybe being being productive is the best way to spend my birthday. You know, just to make sure that you know, um, just I wanted to take the day off, but it's a weekday and I have a lot of things to do. And I did mention that September, October, and November is our busy months for writing. Okay, so let us get into the first question, and I will really try my best not to speak that fast my anxiety levels for some reason are just at the peak today and then i drank coffee <laughs> guess i said i needed extra energy oh gabriel open the light no open no 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 open no 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 go there please no yeah because no, extra no, for today no, no, no. okay so our first question is what does literary success look like to you now you can answer this in the comments or if you're watching the replay or you can answer this in the live chat if you come in um what does literary success look like to you for me um let's be honest uh, let's be honest every one of us has like a dream to become a millionaire let's not deny it um, at first, that was me. I was like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. I want to write and want to be a millionaire. <laughs> um, but, you know, as time uh, progressed, um, for, uh, for me, when I say literary success for me, um, being able to publish my books and make a decent amount of um, living from it, you know, like I don't need to be a millionaire. Um, I just want to be able to earn enough to provide for my little one's future, um, for myself as well, you know, to save for, you know, for <laughs> for when I am a, I am a grandma. <laughs> and I also want to buy stuff for my little one and for myself as well, you know. Um, that's why I work hard, you know, to in, in what I do, especially now that writing is my career now, you know, so. Um, <clears throat> Honestly, just want my books to stand the test of time. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, I, of, of course, when excuse me, of course, when you're like a young writer, you want to be like a millionaire because that's when you hear like you know, Harry Potter and Hunger Games and you know, Twilight. You just want to, oh, I want to be a millionaire, millionaire like them. 
But if I ever become a millionaire because of my writing, I would definitely, definitely donate. Um, it's been my dream to uh, be a part of UNICEF. I, I actually want to be a UNICEF ambassador. Um, I was like, oh, how old was I? I was in high school. And I was, I had this like crazy dream of, I want to be the youngest UNICEF ambassador. Yes, I had that. I had that. I had that dream. And I still want to be a UNICEF ambassador. Um, other than that, um, I also want to buy, um, as you can see, I have two, I have three rings now. And I would like to buy accessories that, you know, um, that support, you know, um, beliefs that I, beliefs that I support in, especially when it comes to to as well i would love to do that also my internet should be my internet is not like, cooperating again it's, hi so yeah um <clears throat> oh, my internet isn't cooperating again it's been like that the whole day it, it was much worse this morning my goodness so yeah I would love that. <laughs> um, and hi. Ah, uh, I am so bad at names. Yuna, Yuna, Yula. I'm I'm close. I know I'm close. But hi, how are you? Yeah, you're early. Um, we won't be doing any sprints tonight. Uh, we will be just be answering questions. My internet, please cooperate with me. I rarely do special. Uh, live streams please cooperate with me uh next question is i will try to fit 25 questions within an hour because this is this is a martian hour that's how we do it um next question is the bet what's the best way to market your books um i forgot the difference of hard selling and soft selling um but i'm the kind of person where um i would love for you to read my book but i'm not gonna shove into your shove it into your face um what i've been doing recently is every weekend i make sure to promote my book um i plan uh yeah that's how i do it um, as much as possible i promote my book or i promote the works that i do and i plan to do most of my marketing during um weekends um, because during the weekends I don't do much, I don't do writing, any writing during the weekends, especially on Sundays. I don't do anything that's like writing related on Sundays as much as possible. Um, but that is, that's my plan. Um, the best, well, the best place for me to share my writing right now is on Instagram because that is my author platform. Um, on my outro spiel, it's, it's, it's a, how you say it, spiels on my vlogs, I do promote my my works now. Um, before I didn't do that, but now uh, I, I've i become a, a little more confident in uh, uh, shout, giving a shout out to my books. Um, on Facebook, I've shared it recently. Yeah, I shared it recently and um, I, I am happy with it. Um, I do, because right now my book is on uh, reading sites, and so I join Facebook groups for those reading sites and promote my books there, because that's generally re where my audience will be. Technically, that's where. <laughs> uh, allowing others to have read the book to, uh, read the book to advertise it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually, uh, it's like ARC readers, right? My brain's not working. I believe those are art readers, and yeah, that's, I, I agree with that because um, at least they will be able to spread the word out. Um, uh, these days, it's hard to find art readers because I know everybody's busy. I am the worst person to choose beta readers and art readers because it's always before camp nano season or before nano season. So yeah i'm just i'm just the worst at choosing a time for beta readers and art readers to read my books so yeah um but with the reading sites um you you're actually able to read a few chapters for free so uh yeah <laughs> what are you doing my son just keeping himself yes there he goes there he goes uh okay so next question next question is 
what kind of research do you do and how long do you spend researching before beginning a book? Uh, <laughs> I'm the kind of writer where um, I do, here's the thing, I'm the kind of writer that doesn't do a whole amount of research before I write a book because I know that the story will change as I rewrite. So what I do is I do a bit of research before the zero draft and then every every time I rewrite, I always do research on things that I don't know or some things that I think that, for example, I have a new idea for the for the draft. That's when I do research and I when that happens, I do thorough research on that. You know, the researching before the zero draft, I can do it like quickly. But whenever I rewrite it, that's what that's why my rewrites take such a long time is because the rewrites are long and then I do research in between, especially when I'm unsure of a certain conversation, a certain topic or a certain term. That's where the re like the heavy research get like happens. So yeah. And how long do I spend researching before the beginning of a book? Like I said before, I I uh, during the before the zero draft i just spend like maybe a week maybe a week to just you know get a general clue of what i want to be seen in the book history and myth mythological research and the times depending but uh, that's actually true um <clears throat> i've been researching um a local folk local folklore <laughs> Here in the here from the Philippines, um, because I know we have our own mythology, but I've never um, really dive deep into it. And um, because of the short story that I did for the anthology anthology that I joined in, I became more and more interested on it. So, yeah, <laughs> Winter Tiger. Uh, I don't really research anything at first because in the me draft, I just vomit words in the paper and mostly because I'm a discovery writer. That's, we're the same. I'm actually a discovery writer as well. So that's why I said before the zero draft, I don't do heavy research on it. I don't do heavy research on it. I just, you know, do light research like for a week, maybe for a week before I start zero drafting. And then after that, we're good to go. <laughs> uh, the heavy research really happens while we write, we're writing. However, when I reread it after the reread, I research everything. Yeah, so here we are definitely the same. That's that, that's what I'm trying to say. The rewrite of mine takes longer. Yeah, rewrite my rewrites do take longer. Um, but right now I have a certain deadline to do because I need to submit it. Yeah. Uh, next question. <clears throat> this is a good question. This is this is actually a very good question. Um. Do you view writing as a kind of a spiritual practice? Um, I would say that writing is my emotional release. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of bottled up emotions and I am not good at expressing them. And when, and here's the thing, based on my experience, when you try to express bottled up emotions, it doesn't go very well. I explode like a volcano so um what happens is um to prevent that from happening. so my emotions can be turned into can be turned into songs or into stories and um so it's not a spiritual practice per se it's for me it's an emotional release that's how i view my writing as uh, because with spiritual practice, it's a different, <laughs> it's a different conversation. Um, so yeah, and as much as possible, I don't view my writing as work. Because for me, I realize that the more I look at my writing as work, it becomes somewhat um, boring, and I don't want to do it. So I just say I'm gonna write now, and it's like me doing one of my one of my most favorite activities back in high school, daydreaming. That's the, that's, the, that, that's the best counterpart for me to, you know, to um to see writing as. Oh, you do! Wow. Can is it okay to like tell us more? Oh, my internet! 
And so while we wait for Kiara's answer, um, let us proceed to the next question. But do tell us more. Uh, next question is... Okay, what's the most difficult thing about writing characters from the opposite sex? Um, I, I actually had this uh, dilemma. Um, because whilst writing Tai Wage, I'm writing for the main character is a guy, Robert, and I was afraid that I might be making Robert too. There's a term in this world that it's too feminine or too masculine, right? And I was afraid that maybe I was writing Robert too, too feminine <laughs> um, in terms of um, like emotion. So I tr I tried to balance everything by you know um, giving him a feminine and a masculine side at the same time because of course I'm the father so most of the time you know the characters you know, especially the main um, will have a lot of influence from me so uh, yeah I think that's what's most difficult for me because um, I'm I'm the kind of person where um, I prefer vulnerability. Uh, to some extent, okay, to some extent, not every, uh, all the time, um, especially with guys, because uh, in our society, guys mm. are somewhat trained not to show any kind of emotion, and I don't know why, um, and uh, I, I don't agree with that, because I know that guys do need uh, emotional support as well, and that's why I don't stop my son from expressing his emotions. No. Um, okay, if you're angry, be angry. Go ahead. Just don't throw anything at me. Don't hurt me. Just be angry. And just so he could let the frustration out. Um, not for me, writing is just my escaping mechanism. That's why I just write for two to four hours in a great writing day, but just an hour in a regular day. Awesome. Uh, these, day, uh, these days, uh, when I, whenever I handwrite, I only write for at least like 30 minutes. When I have um, that's the yeah, 30 minutes for one handwriting session a day. And yes, it can mean like slow progress, but for me to handwrite for an hour. Nope. Uh, writing character from the opposite gender is harder for me, maybe because of my sexuality too, but I'm more closer to my male characters and I tend to do that to my female. Oh, oh really? Um, because for me, with, when it comes to female uh, characters, um, I find it easier to express myself because I am female. Um, but you know the challenge there is not to, is to just balance their energies. Like you have the you have the theme, uh, mm -hmm. feminine side and the masculine side for both genders. This is that's just what I want. Um, that's why in my rewrite I always make a lot of rewrite for my female characters and I'm very much okay in everything for my characters. So that's awesome. That's really really good. At least you're at least you're aware of that. You know sometimes I'm not <laughs> sometimes I'm not aware of it. I'm just like I'm just writing. That's all I want. Like, yeah, most of the time, that's my uh, that's my thing. that's my thought process. <clears throat> that's good. How long were you a part time writer be be before? <clears throat> my words. How long were you a part time writer before you came a full time one? Um, why did I have Gabriel? Uh, part time writer. I was a part-time writer for four years, and then and then I became a full-time uh, writer just this year. Um, after um, when I came back from my hiatus, yeah, that's when I was a full-time writer, and uh, I also became a full-time writer because of what happened. And yeah, we're not gonna dive into that, but that's it. I was uh, I had a day job for four years as a mom. Okay, I'm not counting the. the the other two years because I was single back then. Um, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, ooh. Uh, yeah, here, there we go. Um, I, I had a part time, not part time, I had a morning job, a day job for four years. Uh, and I was writing on the side. I wasn't, earn, I wasn't earning anything from my writing back then. I was just writing just to make sure that I get published. Um, and then um, after what happened, um, after what happened last March and April, 
and then I returned from a hiatus, I became a full-time writer. And I'm I'm happy, I'm happy. Excuse me. I think the caffeine just ran out. <laughs> um, and now the funny thing is my two new books are now, what's BL? Please let me know. I'm bad with um with terms. Uh, wait, for twenty one years, <laughs> what? For twenty one years, uh, I became a part time writer when I was in college. Still in college, but now I, that I stopped for a mean for the meantime, I'm writing almost full time. Awesome, nice. Uh, like guy to guy. Hey, I just want to make something clear that I don't. Uh, like for some people, they would say you hate. If I said if I ask a question, people would be like, "Oh, you hate that kind of story." No, I don't. Okay, I don't. To be honest, and this is a well kept secret. I have read uh, girl to girl romance, and I have my certain favorites. I forgot what the titles were, but I read them back then. But they were good stories. Actually, they were good stories. They have a good plot, so that's why I enjoyed it. It's romance, yes. <laughs> romance solely. There's no like smut. <gasps> oh, we just answered this. How many hours a day do you write? Well, today, today for the ebook file of TIOH, I wrote for an hour. <laughs> I wrote for an hour, yes, but it, it, those are rewrites. And for handwriting right now, I, I'm actually going to do two 30 minutes because I wasn't able to write yesterday. So that's going to be an hour. So I, in equivalent, I will be doing two hours tonight for the handwriting. <laughs> Somebody save me. Somebody save me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll be writing for two hours. Technically, um, on an, actually on an unusual day, I write for two hours a day. Just two hours because uh, that's the maximum level of creativity that my brain can do. And actually, for those tw tw two hours, I can do a lot. What? I can do a lot for two hours. Uh, next question. Oh, another good question. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Just leave your answers in the comments. I will still read them. Um, what period of your life do you find you write about most often? What period of life do you find you write about? Child period. Oh, um, I haven't tried the child period of my life. Do you find you write about? Well, I write most about, you know, teenager, young adult, new adult, adults. I haven't written for children yet um, because for me, writing for children is tricky. For me, okay, for me in my brain. For some reason, uh, my five-year-old brain finds it hard to write, to write for children. <laughs> um, because I don't want to write anything that's not appropriate for children. I'm a mom, that's why. Um, but uh, acor well, um, according to my mom's suggestion, she was like, you should write something for children and base it, base it on Gab's adventures because Gab has his own world and I do find it fascinating sometimes because I get to see a glimpse of it so I'm like well I know that my kid wants to be a superhero um uh he wants to be a superhero I sometimes he's a like he's a cowboy sometimes uh sometimes he's a dancer he's a singer you know the child has unlimited worlds that they create you know, and it's fascinating sometimes to watch them do that um I've been writing part-time since eight oh really and I've been working since, oh, wow, that's young. I didn't become a full-time until I was about 25, so I did the math wrong. We'll say 10. Okay, we'll say 10. Oh, wow, that's so young. Wow, I can't, I can't say anything. Just, wow, I'm shocked. Um, yes, guy to get romance, pure romance, that's my thing, basically. Because... <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh. Hey, 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 since you're here, I'm going to tell you something. And this, I, I mentioned this a while ago. I bought uh, Bubble. I know you know Bubble. So those who are watching this on the replay, Bubble is an app where you can talk to GYP artists. And um, 
when she uh han and lino the two people that she mentioned are, are from stray kids um and uh they're on the bubble app and for me um ever since i stand stray kids i told my sisters that i want to buy one ticket for the bubble app and my bias is Han, um, but I, I was being biased wrecked by Lino since uh, King, Kingdom ended. Um, and uh, today's my birthday. And uh, yesterday, uh, I, I told I, I just told a few states yesterday, like Han has to, because they went toe to toe last Monday. And I'm like, Han has to make his standing solid by Tuesday because Wednesday I need to make a decision. And this morning, I made a decision to buy Han's. Uh, a ticket for a hundred and um he sent a message on bubble today so that actually that, that that actually made my birthday a lot special a lot more special and i i don't know uh, i i i know he doesn't know that but it, it definitely made my birthday a lot special so that's like my birthday treat to myself and i thank god for um allowing you know the bubble messages to happen because um, i'm really mourning for the loss of my cat so yeah and i I wish I could write for eight hours. I really wish, um, but I, I'm also doing other stuff on the side, and I'm, I'm I also give attention to this little one because he needs my time and attention. Um, I'm a single parent, so I, I need to be very very strategic with how I you know how I like use my time. Hey, no. So yeah. Uh, adult, but I try. I'm trying to write a teenage high book. Awesome! I am sending you lots of support for the teen and as well as the child, uh, children's book. Uh, my writings are all young adults. Uh, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I also mainly write from young adult to adult, but I think I will be writing in the future from middle grade because I have stories that I wrote back in high school and I don't know if it's 13 considered middle grade I think they are right 13 is considered middle grade um, and the characters are within that age so yeah oh, oh yeah so that was a question uh, next one <clears throat> Okay, so uh, we are going to answer this question based based on the very last book that we wrote or the very last story that we wrote. So what did you edit out of that book, out of that story? Um, I edited uh, out... Uh, I edited out a lot of things. Um, but for the first book, for the first book of... Um, for the first book of TIOH, I edited the original. Ah! This is not a movie, son. Uh, I edited. Um, I edited out the original prologue because, well, I was rewriting the whole thing, and then I was thinking about the sequels, and the spinoffs, and the and then the prequels and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, this prologue it doesn't fit in the first book. It fits. Actually, it fits on like the the sequel, so yeah, it was hard to um, edit it out because I was like, "This is so hard." It's really, really hard to edit it out because you know it's it it's like this is this is the prologue that I stuck that I that I was stuck with um, while the draft sat the the draft sat on the corner of the room, um, but. Um, according to feedback, you know, it was a better, I wrote a better prologue for that. Um, Gabby is so cute. Yeah, um, th that's how he is, and I'm happy that he's a, yeah. he's a very energetic child. We just danced to Thunderous before we went up here. This kid is a literal baby stay. Now, fans of Stray Kids are called stays, and you, you are called a baby stay when you're a newbie. This one is a little literal baby stay. He's a child. <laughs> He's a child. Um, but he already knows the dance steps to Thunderous, God's Menu, Backdoor, Victory, Victory Song, Easy, All In. That's why I hate practicing dancing when he's around because he gets it so quick. Like, you, you dance it in front of him for 
three times in a row, he instantly gets it. So yeah, also, I can see your avatar. Is that the coca and the bunny? I immediately know that's that's a bunny. I immediately know that that's the bunny, but I need to know that that's the coca because it has blue. He has blue hair. Also, congratulations to Stray Kids for winning their show on Show Champion today. They don't know me, but I'm congratulating them anyway. <laughs> Next question. It's actually 11.06 here and my son is just... <laughs> okay, have you read anything that made you think differently about fiction? Have I read anything different that made you think differently about fiction? Have I read anything that made you Oh, so far... The Sweetie Shades count? Uh, no, um, well, the Sweetie Shades, it has like... You know, like the BDS um conversation there. Um, it what made me think differently because of that is the way that I'm putting. For example, um, because right now I'm writing something about you know it's fantasy, mainly fantasy. And if we're going to talk about the moral realm, it's not the present time. So um, me reading that book, um, it actually made me think a lot more carefully if i'm going to write something that's within the present period or the futuristic period yeah so it's just me you know like wanting to be more careful um i edited a lot of things in the first book i finished but the major edit i did was i picked a wrong interest and there's a chemistry oh that's hard that's hard when you already have this like love interest but then as you go down the line, you realize that there's still chemistry here. I need to change it. So um, I hope it went well. I really hope it went well. I know it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. Um, <clears throat> this is the next. This is the next question. Uh, where's the band? Okay, there it is. Uh, what are the ethics of writing about historical figures? For me, personally, if we're going to talk about writing about historical figures, um, yeah, you know, I want it to be... I know accuracy isn't easy because that would require you to do a lot of research. Um, but for me, if you're going to write about historical figures as much as possible, accuracy has to be there because you're talking about historical figures you're going to talk about people real life people that lived years ago before we were even born and there were already studies made about them so the least you could do is to read what those studies were and you know just base everything there you know you, of course there's nothing wrong with adding a bit of fiction into it a little bit of imagination but if it's historical figures, there's research done about them. Base it there. You have your basis there. Um, next, I, I don't think I can. I don't think I read anything that changes my thoughts about fiction. Yeah, I'm not entirely changed. Maybe just it just you know gave me more insights of what I need to be to be careful about, what I need to do more, why I need to do more research. You know, why I need to do about doing research. Yeah, but that's it. Uh, it doesn't really change um, my thoughts about fiction. Yeah. Gabriel, I can see you. Oh no. Oh wait. Uh, next question is How do you select the names of your characters? So this is a fun thing to answer. Um I know you guys are aware of the, the fantasy name generator. I use that, but, but, and a big but. Um, uh, whenever I do, like, whenever I decide on character, first off, um, I list down the name, I list down, like, the list of characters. And then, how do I explain this? 
beside beside uh, main character one two three four five prince one two three like that and beside that i put the names that immediately entered my mind when i thought about this character and then on the on, on the next side uh, on the next one um i do research on names that name for example um, i want the main character's name to mean like the sea and so i put like the best one that i think and then on the next one i do the fantasy name generator and then i choose like the best names that i can find and then after that i just try to find the middle ground between those three sometimes i combine the names so don't ask why sometimes my characters have weird names it's because of that <laughs> it's because of that yeah that, that that's how it's because i can't you know i can't make my mind up whenever i uh, choose the names for my characters maybe that's the infp in me or something <laughs> um next question is if you didn't write what would you do for work honestly um if i finished my college degree i would be a teacher i would be an english teacher um if and if i'm still down the same path i didn't finish finish college i would be working at uh i, I would be in the call center industry yeah definitely in the call center industry i would really return to working outside but right now thank god i won't i'm not doing that because of the pandemic and i'm here at my house um, i'm able to take my son and I'm able to, and still provide for the two of us uh i don't i usually use baby names in google but i always have the first name and second name that i will think of a surname that are fitting same uh i do use the baby names in google sometimes with the surnames i i play around with the fantasy name generator yeah if surnames are needed if surnames are needed <clears throat> Next question is here. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not it. Okay, let me change it first. Okay. Next question is, do you read your book reviews? How do you deal with bad or good ones? Um, on reading sites, on reading sites, I have received um, reviews from my story. Um, so far, uh, so far, I haven't received any bad reviews yet but if there's going to be bad reviews i am uh, i i prepared myself for that and with the good ones of course i thank them from the very bottom of my heart uh, it's it's nice to see that um, after you work after you worked on a certain story for the longest time and you know for the audience to say this is a good story this is a good book you feel some sense of relief and you just very you're very, very thankful for that uh, if I didn't write and finish my college, I would I might be a journalist now. Actually, my father suggested that I be, I would I chose I choose journalism because I write. Um, but then journalism, as I can remember, involves like writing for the newspaper and magazines, and I suck at that. <laughs> I'm the worst at that, and it's funny because I used to do article writing. So yeah, um, the, I do not read the book review. <laughs> Um, I actually do not read it. Um, it just how it happens that it it notifies me in like email. So um, me being the curious person that I am, I read it and always expect the worst. Is that a bad thing that you always expect the worst? Because I don't want to like, I don't have so much. I don't want to have high expectations that my book is good. You know, that's it. <clears throat> Uh, oh, do you, ooh, this last question. Um, do you hide any secrets in your books that only a few people will find? Yes. And um, soon I will be releasing my songs, which means I will be releasing the lyrics. And if I'm going to answer, do you hide any secrets in your songs that only a few people will find? Yes. I have a lot of secrets hidden with my writings and um, I've only, ex I, I don't think I've explained them especially to the person who gave me the plot idea for the impact to her i never will really explain my secrets there's there are hidden secrets within the, the story 
and um, I never fully told anybody about it. Uh, maybe in the future I will. I will tell some some other people. Um, but yeah, but that's why they're secrets. You don't tell anybody because it's secret. <laughs> Oh, I don't receive any reviews yet because I don't really post my stores anywhere. It's just in my shelves. But if beta reader reviews are included, I take the by comments as a step stepping stone and to make my book more enjoyable to read. The same. Uh, I have received um, reviews from my beta readers that they don't like certain parts of the book. And for me, I didn't take it personally. Because why? I would take it personally um, because I read it and and I know that it's constructive criticism. So I was like, "There's no, there's no need to take this like, like as bad as you think it will be. It's for you to grow and it's for the story to become better." Yeah. I do, I do have a lot of hidden secrets that no one knows, but one of my beta readers know because he's male. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. At least it's within the family. It's a, it's a family secret. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, here we go. This is a, this one's a nice question. Um, <clears throat> what was your hardest scene to write? Currently, the hardest scene for me to write was the action scene at uh, on the first book of The Impact of Her. I've never written an action scene before and I was so afraid that I might, I might when I write it, I might drag it to track it to the point it's boring or I might just gloss over it too fast and um, I was so afraid of that that I literally watched any uh, writing advice on you on author tube about action scenes and at the time I was like I, I couldn't understand I, I don't know where to go with it I don't know what to follow so I was like I'm sorry for my word but I was like screw it I'm just gonna write it the way I wanted to, to be written and if my beta reader says it's too fast, then I will tone it down. And peep, and if the beta reader says that it's too slow, then we'll quicken the pace. And um, so far, I've received um, you know good reviews on the action scene that I was so afraid of writing. And um, I'm happy that you know I'm happy that uh, my beta readers enjoyed that. So I'm writing right now. I've encountered the hardest scene. Ooh, what is it? 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 Tell me. Tell us. Tell us. Shh. Uh, next question, and this is a uh, this is this is this is a weird question, but I would love to know your answer. Um, do you Google yourself? <laughs> um. Once in a while, I do. I don't know. I was just curious because, of course, me, I wonder if you search Nicole Marcina on Google, what comes out? What? Right? So you, you, get, you get curious. And um, uh, I find it funny that whenever I search my name on Google, uh, my author platforms and my books do appear. Um, I just don't look at the photos part of Google because I don't know what it has. Um, but, yeah. Actually, I'm going to search it right now. Sorry. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to search my name. So, yeah, there's the Facebook, there's the YouTube. Oh my God. Okay, so um, this might be weird. And this is. The I'm going to share the screen. Screen, you guys so I searched I searched my name on Google and as usual you know I only like I uh, only look for like um, like the instant search results and then I click images and look at this look at that This is nice at Club Nova. What? What did I do that? Oh wow! Oh, what? Tangent. 
when did I do this? Did I do this tangent? I stop sharing it. Okay, so you just saw me Google myself. So that's how it looks like. So do you Google yourself? I'm not gonna do that again. I'm not gonna do that again. It's so weird. <clears throat> uh, okay, next is um, what one thing would you be would you give up to become a better writer? Um, uh, I would say um, no, no. I said I would say I might actually like where I am right now. Like. For some people, you know, um, I've heard some people they wish they they're still single. They they wish they wish to be still alone so they could spend more time with writing. Um, but for me, I prefer having a kid because because it helps me um, manage my time better. So like everything, every single second, every single minute counts. So um, what one thing that I would give up to become a better writer? I like the way I am right now as a writer because um, I know I still have a lot to learn and there's still so much to, to do and you know I like I like who I am as a writer now like I am I am I my brain is a sponge a sponge uh, for the story I'm writing now I realize the scene that I scene that I write the hardest is the part of the angst I rewrite one of that one scene and chapter a lot of angst. Ooh, that's hard. Um, I have read like a few fan fictions where um they try to write angst and I'm like I don't feel it. And there are some writers who write angst and I'm like, this the emotions are too much. The emotions are too much. Um, TV, <laughs> TV and and buying things I want to save money for content. <laughs> I well, that one I agree with. That one I agree with. Um, Google myself. Someone would. I would. What's your other name? I'll try and Google you after this one. My cat is here. Milky. I have you guys seen Milky? She's all grown up now. Yeah, and she's half cat, half bunny. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I keep showing her tail up because she's just so adorable. Okay, here we go. Oh, what was that? Yeah, but she's just a, a bear. She's she's half fluffy bunny. Um, so I don't have an answer for this, but if you do, please answer this. I would love to know what to answer. If you want to answer here, what are, what are your favorite literary journals? Let me search the book again. Journals, literary journals. Oh, oh, okay, magazines. Okay, literary journals. Okay, do you have one? I don't have one. Um, kitty. <laughs> yeah, it's kitty. Um, I like the way I am now because I still have a lot of things that are the same. I wouldn't say I would give up YouTube because YouTube keeps me um, awake, especially now that um. It's the straight kids come back. So. But do you have like any literary journals that you love, or favorite literary journals? Because I, I don't have any. Literary journals like, you know, uh, magazines dedicated like for, I think for books. I can understand from what I just researched, um, book reviews. Oh, well, we're almost done with the stream and almost done with the question. So next question is, what is your favorite childhood book? Peter Pan, hands down. Um, if we're going to talk about um, Peter Pan, oh, if we're going to talk about like novels, Peter Pan and Narnia, definitely. Um, but locally here in the Philippines, um, I used to read like fables and legends. Like um, since uh, Winter Tiger is here, I can say this. Um, my one of my favorites is Pilandok. It's a fable. If I can remember, I can check where it's a video. Um, I also like Anamat Pantinya, Lamata Ampalaya, Lamata Sibuyas. Um, those are like those like legends or myths, like uh, how uh, how the onion became to be, how the bitter gourd became to be. Um, what else? Um, 
I read Ibu Adarna, and I I know it's either a book or a stage play originally. But I love Ibu Adarna. Um, yeah, but when it comes to novels, it's definitely Peter Pan and uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. Peep, uh, some people would say Harry Potter and stuff like that. But mine is the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> Uh, childhood books is definitely Alice in Wonderland and Baby. Yeah, there we go. Um, Alice in Wonderland, I haven't read it yet, but I'm to buy a copy of it because I'm very interested. In, I actually love um the Disney um movie, but maybe that's just me. Daddy, <laughs> I'm a Disney Daddy, child. Daddy, 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 I'm singing it right now. What is the most difficult part of your artistic, wow, artistic, artistic process? Uh, being able to stop and let the story go. And I mean it in the sense that to stop editing and let it go because sometimes rewriting. Sometimes rewriting too much, rewriting over and over again is like overkill. It's like killing your book endlessly when in reality um, you've done your best, you've done your part to, 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 edit, to edit and polish the story. So that, that's definitely for me, just to stop, stop it and just let it go. Let it stand, let it fly. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, mythologies. All over the world, fairy tales and box, 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 car children. What's that? But well, fairy tales definitely and mythologies. I once borrowed a book about Greek mythology. And I don't know where it is right now, but I once borrowed a book like that and I read every story. Greek mythologies. It's very very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. I Koka actually. Sang Baby Shark uh, during their filming of um, for the music video Gone Away. It's the first time I heard Baby Shark in the Korean version, so I was like, I I, I, did, I did hear it from Jungin once, but Hans Hans by bias, that's why. <laughs> um, finding time. Oh yes, definitely. I wish I would. Ha I wish I could have more time for myself, but you know, writing for two hours a day and making every second count is you know, it's teaching me a lot. I think my son got the pumpkin pig. Um, does your family support your career as a writer? Um, ever since um, I took my hiatus and ever since the, the, the incident in March and April, they've been very supportive, especially when they saw that I can actually like earn money uh, enough to support my lifestyle and my my son um they've been very very supportive and um they actually they, they've been actually they've, they've been supportive from the very beginning because they knew that that was where my strength was um but in terms of it being a career of course they, they had their doubts at first you know but when you know they saw that you know you could definitely make a living out of it they supported me all all the way and they've been very very supportive uh, same, I find it hard to stop and let it rest before making the edit. See, I, I'm, it's just the, you know, the profession is in us, you know, we, we have to let it be. And especially when we know we've edited so much, it's time to stop and let it fly. It's, it's something that I'm still working on. Yes, awesome. I That's actually one of the things that I wish that would happen is, you know, for, for people to support, you know, their families and their friends that has like, artistic tendencies to just support them all the way because that's a, that's really all we need you know to really keep pushing and you know uh, working hard even more sorry i thought it was someone that i didn't want to see <laughs> uh next question <clears throat> if you oh not that one okay if you had to do something differently as a child or a teenager to become a better writer as an adult, what would you do? Read 
more. <laughs> read more. And um, uh, because as a young writer, I was easily um, persuaded by people saying that you will never become a good writer or your writing is just a hobby. And, and because of those words, I actually ha had moments where I didn't write because I was so discouraged. And um, I actually wish that I would, I would read more, but uh, seeing, you know, that, you know, I didn't come from a rich family and you know, we're always on a, on a tight budget. Um, I only get to read books from the library, our school library, and our school library has very limited books. Um, and whenever I can read a book, you know, I usually borrow from my cousins and, you know, I don't usually do that because I'm shy about my cousins. Um, but I just wish that I could have read more and, you know, wish that I didn't pay attention to those of people who keep saying that you're not going to be anything if you're going to pursue writing. You should lay down. You're sleepy. Just ask for Peppa Pig. It's 11.32. Last two questions. Uh, there we go. How long, on average, does it take you to write a book? Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, if I'm very, very diligent and I follow my schedule to a T, I would finish a story in a month or two. But if not, it takes me three to four months. The longest I've been was with Tayo H is because um, in 2014 and I returned to it by 2020. So it's, that's like six years and it only really took off during 2021, which is now. So that's, that's, that's long. And it's for, and for the sequel, um, I started it back at 20, but now I'm old because I'm very, um, tight schedule for it. Um, my mother and grandma is very much supportive to me, but my father always down me whenever I shared anything on social media about my writing and he was like, oh, oh I understand. Um, well, um, it it's it's sad when there are people who doubt you. Um, especially, um, I, especially, I noticed this, that because here in the Philippines, actually, I, people are very business oriented and you know if you're going to choose a career most people will want you to be you know like an accountant a doctor a lawyer an engineer or anything that you know could instantly say money <laughs> with a degree um so um I, i'm really sad for my fellow creative people here because we really just want to be creative and we want to earn and make a living as creative people so when I when I see this um these kinds of situations, it breaks my heart. Uh, that's why um I always extend my support to fellow writers and fellow creative people, you know, who want who want to be you know successful in their in their path. So um, I I support you, and I'm happy that you have your mother and your grandmother to support you, um, and and that's what's important. You know, you still have people who root for you. Yes. If I'm very consistent in my writing, I will finish the me draft in just a month or two. But if not, I'm finishing it for almost six months. We're 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 incredibly the same, incredibly the same. Um, and the very last question is, uh, last question is, um, be honest with this. Do you believe in writer's block? Uh. I do believe that uh, if we overwork ourselves, our brain shuts down and it won't it, do, it won't want to do anything creative because I've been there. Um, and there are some points where, let's be honest, we when we sometimes when we say writer's block, most of the time we're, we're just procrastinating. Um, there are times where we just we just procrastinate. Right. Yeah, but there are also times where you know when we overwork ourselves, our brain just you know shuts down. And it doesn't want to do anything creative because you use it to its maximum level. And all it wants to do is just think of nothing. I've been there. Like, 
I was so, I know I was working myself too much at the brink and I knew I was burning out, but I still had ideas. I still had ideas. And at one time I was just like, oops, I can't think of anything. And I'm trying to push through it and I'm like, nope, I still can't think of anything. So that's why sometimes I take a hiatus just to let my brain breathe. You know, because I know that my brain works 24, uh, not 24 seven, but it really works every day. It doesn't stop thinking of new ideas. So, yeah. Uh, where's the mouse? Okay, there we go. Uh, not really. I believe sometimes we need a break, but I don't believe in writers. Well, that actually, um, I that I actually agree with that at some point because um, there are times where we say writers block. Sometimes we it's just us procrastinating, like we we don't want to write. But we know we want to. We want to write, but we don't want to write. We have to write, but we don't want to write. That's that's it. That's it. Technically, for me, okay. For me, I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to force you to agree with me. But that's just me. Hold on. I'm just checking my. Just checking my to do list. I have only one left, and it's handwriting. Oh boy, an hour of it. Should I get coffee again? Yeah, I think I should. I'm going to put Gabriel to sleep if that's going to happen. But yeah. Uh, okay, so. I'm hearing my son singing now. That's him trying to make himself sleep. Uh, <laughs> um, I do believe in it, but if I didn't fight, fight that writer's block, I'm not going to gonna finish anything. Yeah, that is true. That's why there are some stories that I have finished for me because of because of because I surrender to writer's block when I can't break through that wall for the third time. So. My son's already saying that's what he's doing right now. That's what he's doing right now. Um, should I just That's it. That's it. Uh, that's why I usually drink or that a break or a couple of things. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a break. Um, after this, I'm going to um, take uh, close the laptop for, for a moment. Uh, I'm going to close the laptop and put my son to sleep. And if I still have energy after handwriting, I'm going to stream maybe until like 2 or 3 a.m. I, I stream for straight kids. I was into their music. And I'm watching something on YouTube before I went on here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that as well. Uh, but that's all I have for you today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this live stream, do give it a big thumbs up and follow everyone that's in the live chat. Thank you for uh, tuning in and joining me for my uh, birthday special live stream for both Twitch and YouTube. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed answering the questions, and I do hope I get to do this again. Um, my upload schedule is usually um, Wednesdays and Fridays, but because I did the live stream, I did two live streams today, I didn't upload anything. The next upload will be on Friday. And um, I do live streams on Twitch and on YouTube. Twitch, it's um, for Twitch, I did for the first Monday of this month, and I'm going to do for the last Monday of this month, which is on the 27th. And it will be the same time right now 10 30 p.m uh flipping time on twitch and on youtube i will be doing one for next week and one for the following week and it's 10 30 p.m flipping time uh hopefully by that hopefully during that stream you'll be able to see me um write something but if not you're just going to see me edit vlogs <laughs> yeah because uh i need to edit vlogs on monday for you know the wednesday uh, follow my trail on social media. Everything is listed down below, including my PayPal and my Patreon, where you can help support the channel, and or my caffeine addiction because this girl loves caffeine so much, even though it has a different kind of. Need, but still, I need it <laughs> because um, I only get like six hours of sleep every day. Um, if I go beyond that, I'm um, I'm in pain. My body's gonna my body's gonna gonna hurt. So, yeah. Um, if you 
I'm also getting distracted. Um, if you're interested in reading a short story, uh, short story anthology, check out Dice at Club Nova. Let me just grab the copy here. Um, I have my own author's copy. Um, I asked for it. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, here's a physical book. Here's a physical. It has ebook. It has a physical copy. So yeah, if you're interested, it's on Amazon. It's on BAM Books. Yeah. So we have a copy of that. Um, I am joined by um, lovely authors here. I believe that you're all black authors. I believe, and as I can remember, um, and it's such a pleasure to work with these ladies. I, I still keep in touch with them. Uh, and if you're interested in reading The Impact of Her, the link is in the description. It's everywhere. Um, support it on the writing sites, especially, uh, writing sites, um, especially those that, um, you know, or I'm getting paid for it because there are some sites where I just post it for free. Um, but and soon I, I will be putting out um, the ebook version of the interview. And after that, after I get the formatting done correctly, I will be putting out physical copies as well. <laughs> um, thank you for spending your birthday with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. Uh, thank you for greeting me. I hope we to spend time with you. Later. Um, let me check my schedule. What am I, what am I going to do for the, for those two? Uh, I have a social post on the Kolka's birthday and I have a uh, I have an upload schedule on uh, the Chicks' birthday. Um, but I plan to upload something on TikTok for on the 14th, on the 15th, and on the 22nd. I plan to post something on TikTok and um, hopefully it will come out good. Um, it's just me. Uh, like I said, on my, tic on my TikTok, it's uh, mostly for my musical stuff, like for my dancing and for like me writing music or doing um, guitar covers. So yeah, fingers crossed on that. Uh, and yeah. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys on my next video and on my next stream. Stay safe, stay creative, and happy writing my Martians. Happy September. And yes, the pup. So, yeah. I'll see you guys again. Bye.